everyone and welcome back to another exciting adventure in podcasting for the new year delighted on this episode of words images and worlds to be talking with comics creator ian richardson ian may may i call you ian please do please do all right all right well thank you for jumping in and joining and uh hopefully you've had a nice and restful holiday as we were chatting before the recording um and ready to talk about some illustrations yeah Let's talk about comics. Though. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I usually start by mentioning a few titles and I'll mention just a couple. And then of course, you're welcome to to mention others as we go through. I've, uh, I believe seen at least most of your work, if not all of it uh, in one way or another at this point. And so uh, the commercial level, I'm going to mention Halo folks out there can find Halo pretty quickly. Um in most places 2000 ad of course being a legendary book legendary title um and appreciate your contributions there and then uh noble causes i'll also mention noble yeah, causes yeah. that was that's good fun and trying to think of other things along the way that people might have missed van helsing uh, being one of those but it, it, yeah well there's like three years solid worth of of covers for um for cinescope and stuff so mm -hmm. we can go between bad housing and good fairy tales and various other like just uh, the mini series stuff i did um uh like evil heroes and stuff that was that was good fun like an evil take on justice league like mm -hmm. so yeah. three years worth of the covers for cinescope but it keeps me going for a while and and for for more worldwide stuff that people uh, would struggle to get a hold of, um, we had a while um, sort of post the initial Marvel UK stuff. Um, mm -hmm. we had Benini over here running some original sort of younger reader material stuff. Um, that. I, I literally I, I did dozens of these stories and I have one single issue. I can't find any of them anywhere else, which is slightly frustrating because uh, it was like me drawing sort of Captain America and Spider Man and yeah. Iron Man and Doctor Doom and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, I, I'm sensing the the draw into classic comics and sort of the history of comics based on that and the Batman. Uh, cover behind you mm -hmm. as well um yeah so it seems as though you have a, a history with the medium as a reader one one could say that yeah yeah again it came from kind of um uh, marvel reprint stuff we we had um correct me if i'm wrong somebody out there i think it was about like 1972 um we we struggled to get sort of the original Marvel and DC books over here for mm -hmm. a while. Like the only time I would get to see them. So I live in Birmingham, which is right smack bang in the middle of the country. And, and the only time I would get to see actual imported copies of Marvel and DC books is when I went on vacation and we'd be to the coast. And it would literally be, it would be fodder. Mm -hmm. that came over in the ships and stuff and, and they would just get brought on shore and left on so so it would be books that would be like maybe six months out of date um oh, but wow. but that was sort of like post um 1972 um we had some black and white reprint stuff which was a regular weekly comic um called mighty world of marvel Mm -hmm. so my my mom just happened to pick up one day and bring home and said, I thought you might like this. And like issue one was um again, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like the first ten pages of Incredible Number One. Oh nice, nice, yeah. And the first half of Fantastic Four number one. And then the Spidey origin origin story from Amazing Fantasy Fifteen. Mm -hmm. So, after kind of reading real young kids stuff, and then 
having that put under my nose, it was like, yeah, this, this is me. This is a, this is a slice of money. Yeah. And that was, uh, yeah, never looked back since then, really. Uh, I've heard stories of kind of those stacks of, as you were saying, fodder that were like wrapped and the outer issues were, of course, shredded yeah. and <laughs> in whatever kind of hopeful condition you could find them yeah, and, and also the weird thing is predominantly those those fodder books that i'd see when when going on vacation were usually were usually dc books rather than rather than marvel books mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I, i'd get like superman family and and legion of superhero stuff and and that was, I, I didn't care about going on vacation. I just wanted to go to kind of be able to get these comics that I couldn't get anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talk about book access for sure. Um, yeah. So it was a, a way to, to get away from the day to day and also connect with some cosmic storytelling at the same time. Yeah. And then and, and I'd been sort of corrupted from a, a an even earlier age than that, that my dad used to take me guaranteed every Saturday morning to the movies. And they would have <clears throat> for about two hours um the black and white Batman serials and oh, yeah. the black and white um Buster Crab Flash Gordon stuff. And we'd just go and sit in the cinema for two hours on a Saturday morning and, and kind of soak all this stuff in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that that connection between film and comics, I love that too. It's part of my reading as well. Yeah, uh, very much so. And I kind of career-wise dipped into that a little bit, I mean, to do with a um, bunch of the initial work on uh, Cowboys and Aliens as well. Yeah, yeah. So that was interesting. So, so going from reader to creator. Um, mm. What have been some of those most positive experiences? Uh, I imagine working on the Marvel characters; uh, those issues w- was a big part. Yeah, that's that's just like that's super fanboy stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and then and and, and also and, and strangely enough, that came at a, a, a slightly later time. And I think most of I'd hesitate to say like 90% of the the UK creators that, that stop professionally working in comics tend to work for 2000 AD at some point. And mm-hmm. and and I I can remember I was there buying that very first uh, that very first issue off the stands uh, and, and being lucky. And that kind of stands out as because it was it, 2000 AD was my first professional work as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a, a, a strip called Sinister Dexter, um, and and at a, a time when um, Andy Diggle was editor, um, yeah. uh, so Andy of, of Losers and Hellblazer fame and, and so on, he he gave me my first professional job. Nice, nice. Um, so definitely a a connection there. Any other creators um folks along the way that have been helpful in the journey and just positive collaborations yeah i just, i will always always look fondly on on the noble causes stuff uh-huh, uh-huh. For, a, for a couple of reasons one i was sort of genuinely a, a, a fan of and um, of jay's jay Fairless work anyway and having read like some of these titans and new warrior stuff uh-huh. um but that that was my first American comics work. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was very fortunate that it kind of came um, came out of the blue in as much as Jay found me rather than me kind of submitting any stuff any anywhere else. Um, it was uh, well, this is how long ago it was. A, it was a, a, an online PDF um, comics magazine. Um, I it's terrible. I forget the name of it. Um, it only made out like half a dozen issues, 
Mm. And, um, and I kind of knew the editor of it. And at the time, they were doing a, a, a column in each issue, sort of spotlight on, on up-and-coming talents. Mm -hmm. And I had a spotlight in the second issue, and and Jay happened to get a copy of this, find this, and, and obviously as the spotlight things go, like samples of your work and, and so on. And Jay came across it and... and Got in touch with the magazine and said, Had you got contact details for me? And then uh, got in touch with me from there. And, and that was fun. And I kind of, I, I, I enjoyed that. And, and there's a, a, a small, small dying out story on Marvel Causes as well mm -hmm. for anybody that, that doesn't know um, the series. So we're, at the time, we were doing um, four issue mini series arcs mm -hmm. and, and the first mini i worked on was called Fam uh, noble courses family secrets so issue three um there's a, a storyline so th th for people again that don't know noble courses is, is um like a, a superhero soap opera mm -hmm. it's family family the nobles they're all superheroes and but they're all kind of media celebrity and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's uh, the the daughter from the family ends up pregnant at the time, but she won't tell anybody who the father is. Mm -hmm. Um. So at the time, Image were sort of trying to to put together a. a cohesive superhero universe which kind of post the first bunch of stuff post the the first creators that the wildcats and and spawn and, and cyber force and so on and so it was a kind of everybody that was either left or upcoming so books could cross out with everybody so we we did this um double page spread it was basically this Pregnant teenagers, big brother, mm. who happens to be a robot with the brother's brain inside the robot's body, but we won't go into that. And um, going round threatening every superhero in the image universe, mm -hmm. saying, Are you the father? So it was this dull page spread with multiple part, uh, panels with the brother going around threatening. And the first panel is the brother threatening Invincible, which was technically the first in-store appearance of Invincible before Invincible number one came out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, 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 about the same time, I think it was maybe like, maybe even like three weeks and nothing more, or about the same time they got some preview pages appearing as ad pages in other books. Um, so some people say that's the first appearance of Invisible, and some people say the Noble Causes thing is the first the first appearance of Invisible. But you know, it's a nice little dying out story or whatever. And yeah, so yeah. getting to do that was fun as well. So it was like Invincible and Savage Dragon and Super Patriot and Tech Jacket and Fire Breather, I think it is, the Phil Hester thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all good stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, lots of uh, interesting creations and interesting storytelling, and yeah, and, and not too many around anymore. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely those classic threads, and uh, I imagine it was exciting too to be on sort of the opening cusp of that world building as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think, and I, I think I got the biggest kick out of it because it did a. I think it was like a variant cover for Wizard mm -hmm. at the time. Um, and it was like a jam piece. And I, I don't think I've ever seen it since. And it was kind of like you know, all the heroes kind of flying towards the reader. Mm -hmm. So Eric Larson was drawing Savage Dragon and, and, and things like that. Got like two or three um Noble causes characters in the background, kind of as part of the jump piece. So, 
that's all cool stuff. I like yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, curious about the kinds of stories that you connect with most as a creator, the the spaces that seem to be the most, um, if you could say, energetic spaces, I guess. I, I, I think I've always been that superhero. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like 90% of the time. I'm kind of like, um, I'm a Superman nut. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes from, you know, the, the tattoos don't. I was going to mention you have some, yeah, um, uh, and and then it's kind of strangely enough for for a massive superhero guy, I'm not done that much superhero stuff outside of that sort of um, the Benini UK stuff and the the noble causes stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really. Count any of the 2008 AD stuff as a superhero stuff, and Halo isn't really either. Lots of kind of sci fi stuff. Um, mm. It's been lots of the, a bunch of Western stuff just lately as well, actually, which is, which is interesting. Um, like most of the, the covers for Zilliscope have, have kind of got like a, a horror thread mm -hmm. kind of running through it. Um, I don't know, I do. Maybe it's a, a slight cop out answer, in as much as if it's good, <laughs> I, like I enjoy that. working on it. Yeah, you know, sometimes I, I, I guess, like, like any sort of career and, and whatever, some things can be more laborious than others, and whatever. And I've been quite fortunate that the majority of everything I've, I've worked on is has been, you know, good quality stuff. But bottom line, it, it does always come back to superhero stuff for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I suppose in a way it's very much a, a chicken and egg kind of thing. And it's kind of like where I started drawing from was mm -hmm. copying superhero stuff. And so my style evolved into very much a superhero comics kind of style. Yeah. Um, so those kind of books that kind of what suit me. But I, I, you know, I like drawing anything. Yeah. I always yeah. say it's better than having a real job. <laughs> yeah. Well, and um, that is also a testament to just all the things you can do with a comic, the, the Westerns, the science fiction, any genre, basically. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, I think we all, there's no budget. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, some, sometimes I get to curse writers and stuff every now and again when it says panel one, opening page, we see a train station with 250 people milling around. <laughs> Thanks <Sure>. for that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Way to start off. Um, but yeah, the, 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 there's, there's, again, I suppose it's a little cliche that the only restrictions on it uh, is with people's imaginations and stuff so you can kind of let yourself run riot sometimes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah uh, i'm curious about the um ideas the projects the things that you're currently circling around uh, anything that has your creative attention at the moment um lots of it well um, i guess i'm currently in the middle of things majorly really i've got some more um cinescope covers coming up uh starting with a, a grim fairy tales which is out in to the february and march i think mm -hmm. excuse me um i'm just finishing work on it's book this again it's 2018 toys really um that a bunch of british creators are involved in it's uh, a book called First Men on Mars, um, that's kind of set 1890s. Mm -hmm. So it's sci fi and it's like steampunk and so on. And oh, wow. stuff. And, and so we're doing like airships in the middle of Mars and various things like that. 
Wow. And so I'm just finishing those off. I've got the last two pages of that to finish off. Um, and then immediately after that, um, I've started it. Uh, and so I'm waiting for writer to turn in the next bunch of pages. Um, it's a, a horror western. Um, oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, writer Tony Lee. You, uh -huh. uh, people might know Tony from a bunch of comics over the years, especially like a bunch of Star Trek and Doctor Who stuff. Um, but also, um, he writes a ton of novels now to, uh, about a character called Jack Gatland. It's uh -huh. very much in the kind of the, the Reacher and, and Jack Ryan kind of vein. Um, so Tony's writing there, and we've got. Um, Erin Angiolini colouring it. People might know from um, Justice League and the Critical Role comics mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So that'll keep you going. That's like 120 pages of that. So that'll keep you going for a while. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. So those, those are the main two things. One to finish off and one that I'm just kind of first steps into or any first kind of a couple of other things which I can't exactly. say too much mm -hmm. about at the moment um, but that people um, should we say a little bit more mainstream stuff with characters that people will be a little more familiar with lovely, lovely, well it sounds like you're certainly keeping busy and um, last last question is social media spaces, um, websites, mm. things of that nature where people can follow along and hear announcements. Uh, well, going on from the busy stuff is I tend to be too busy to get my act together enough for a website. Uh, but people can find me predominantly on uh, Facebook, which is facebook.com, uh, Rico Illustration, and then on Instagram, which is... Um, the art of Ian Richardson, and that's about it. I just, most of the stuff I post, I uh, post online is either Facebook or Instagram, so it's the easiest way to get hot for me. Anyway. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, well, thank you, Ian. I appreciate the conversation, appreciate the connection, and glad to have you back anytime to talk about My comics pleasure. and and the world of creating. Anytime. Thank you very much for the invite, Jason. It's been good fun. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for saying yes, and uh, talk again soon. Until the next time. Yes, absolutely.